Hi everyone, welcome back to another vlog. I know it's been a while, so thank you so much for being patient with me. Today, we are hitting the road for a little escape to the beautiful city of Sarasota. So after breakfast, I got ready real quick, put on a comfy outfit, and off we go. The first stop is the Ringling Museum. I honestly just did a quick Google search and this was one of the top locations to visit. And who am I to question Google? I tried to not do too much research because I wanted to get the full experience there. We did get a little map to follow and we decided to start with the Kotler Glass Pavilion first since it seemed like the smallest exhibit so I thought it would be appropriate to start there. This room was filled with glass art which I know nothing about glass making but I can appreciate art. They had sculptures like this which my goodness the details into making this must be crazy. Then we have this dress right here in the center. Kind of looks like a ghost situation right there. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. We also have some thought-provoking art. Then here we have glass bottles that was sprayed to make it look like plastic, which I thought was pretty clever. With that said though, I think this was my least favorite area compared to the rest. So let's move on to the next area, which is called the Circus Museum. This museum celebrates the history of American circus. It includes exhibits on circus life, performances, and a collection of beautifully restored circus wagons. As you guys can see here, it is absolutely gorgeous. I haven't been to many circuses, but learning about the history was pretty cool. There were also stations where you can interact with the exhibits like walk a tightrope and it was way harder than it looks. You can also squeeze yourself into a clown car which I didn't do because the kids were doing that and I didn't want to stand in line with the kids. And here we got to hear some real voices from the performers at the time, which I thought was interesting. Now this part was a little bit confusing to me once I walked in, but then I realized that I was looking at like a mini town. It was so unexpectedly fascinating. The details into every single space was incredible and you would constantly see new things. And the room was so big. This guy right here is doing a little Michael Jackson with his, I don't know, avocados. <laughs> and this family right here living a peaceful life, picking apples, maybe making a pie. Another thing that was cool is that every 5 or 10 minutes, this town would actually go from day to night. So as you guys can see here, the street lights are now on and we can see like their nightlife. Like they don't move or anything, but I just thought it was really interesting and cool to see. Don't forget this room if you are here. After that, we headed to the Bayfront Garden and wow, wow, wow. These trees were magnificent and it gave me a little mythical feel to it. These massive trees are called banyan trees, I believe, and some of the largest and oldest in the US. These trees with their sprawling branches and aerial roots create almost a surreal landscape that fascinated us. Absolutely stunning. I was in awe the whole time I was there.
Now we are heading to the Cotizan mansion. This was the winter home of John and Mabel Ringling, a Venetian Gothic style mansion and a stunning architectural gem. You can tour many of the mansion's opulent rooms, decorated with art and furniture from the Ringling's travels around the world. We only toured the outside of the estate since they were fully booked for the mansion tour, but it was all good. It was so breathtaking even just on the outside. It was truly the perfect day to explore. The sun was shining, there was not too many people. It was just great. Then we have the Museum of Art. This is the cornerstone of the Ringling Estate. The outside was absolutely stunning. Does this not feel like Europe to you? I felt like I traveled into another world being here or just traveled to Europe, honestly. The architecture, the flooring, the garden, wow. On the inside, it had a very impressive collection of European paintings, but also a significant collection of Asian, American, and contemporary art. Oh, and we saw some turtles on our way back. I had no idea their necks were that long, to be honest, but how cute, and there were so many of them. Another thing that we stumbled on on our way back was the Dwarf Garden, which contains collections of stone statues, many of which are whimsically misshapen figures. These statues were apparently collected by John Ringling during his travels in Europe. We found this little hidden spot as well. We took some cute pictures and I was so content after this visit. Truly, truly recommend. We did a lot of walking and it was about to be so much more because our next destination is the Selby Garden. If you are a botanical freak like me, then this is the place to be. It is truly a botanical paradise here in Sarasota. And right upon entering, I instantly felt my soul like rejuvenate in a weird way. This greenhouse was like a botanical maze filled with so many different plants and interesting art that was so soothing to watch. There was no music, just the sound of like running water, minimal chatter while breathing in clean, fresh air. Before coming here, I thought this was just a park where anyone can just enter for free and like picnic. So that's why we had our hot dog cooler bag with us. I made some sandwiches, brought us some snacks and even packed our books to read. But plans changed as soon as I understood that this was a full on botanical adventure. Then we entered an area filled with bonsai and I really, really want one, but they seem so hard to maintain. So let me know if you guys have any tips for a newbie like me. Time for a quick lunch under this huge tree and off we go again. There was no time to waste. I was so excited. Now look how beautiful these cactuses are. And the core fish! Do you see how massive they are? This place was so peaceful and so beautiful. They also had like a meditation bell there, I think. So it was really meant to soothe the soul. Then we entered the children's rainforest garden. Very treehouse inspired, tiki inspired, I would say. And it was really fun to walk around here and explore. Here we have the desert area with a bunch of different cactuses and plants that just simply thrive in the blazing heat. Look how beautiful this is. Oh. 
At this point, it was actually getting blazing hot because it's midday now, but with small breaks here and there, we managed to keep up with the garden. There was also another couple here taking wedding pictures and I think they did the ceremony here as well because the bridesmaids were there. Bet everything turned out stunning because what a place to get married. The heat was definitely getting to me here. I put the AC on blast immediately but I was very impressed on how well my makeup was holding up today. Alright, so now we are heading to the St. Armand Circle. Denard's colleagues actually recommended that spot for some shopping, so we decided to check it out since we were here. It was super cute and not that crowded, which was nice. I was mostly window shopping, to be honest, because I rarely shop at these places. It's way too expensive and too bougie for my taste. I'm more of a thrift girly, so this was just a quick visit and really worth seeing. It was a nice vibe very affluent vibe <laughs> i think it would be nice to have some dinner here but i was really craving korean barbecue so it was time for us to head out after all of that exploring guess who's worked up an appetite us so we went to a place called core we got the nice to meet you recommendation and with that came some appetizers like these pork dumplings right here with a yummy sauce some green onion salad with sesame different sauces for the meat some rice and some cheesy corn then here comes all the different meats to grill some were marinated some were plain but all of them were great the vibes in here were so warm, quiet, cozy for a Korean barbecue, and the food was absolutely delicious. <laughs> Denard was looking for approval of his barbecuing skills here, and I gotta give it to him. He cooked the meat to perfection. Good job, babe. I was so stuffed after this barbecue, but it was the perfect ending to our long day. Now it's time to listen to Kendrick Lamar's diss track as we drive back home. It's been fun sharing all of these moments with you. In the next vlog, we are heading to Orlando, so stay tuned and I will see you in my next one.